my quest to make my own chocolate bar entirely from scratch, I've traveled to the southernmost point of Mexico, a region called Soconusco. Previously, I learned the process of caring for and harvesting from cacao trees. After harvesting, I got to try some of the raw cacao straight from the tree and discovered that it had more of a surprisingly sweet, fruity taste than the chocolate flavor I was expecting. Oh yeah, it's like a bitter chocolate, but it also mm -hmm. tastes like a fruit. In order to capture that chocolate flavor and continue with the next step of turning these beans into actual chocolate, we went to Rubio, who showed me the process of fermenting the beans. Once removed from the pod, the raw beans are placed into a container. Over the next few days, a combination of microorganisms grow and begin the fermentation process. Yeast turn the cacao sugars into alcohol, and other bacteria produce lactic acid and acidic acid. Together, these all help produce a distinct chocolate flavor in the cacao beans. During the process, the container can reach temperatures as high as 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Knowing just how long to ferment the beans is a careful science that Rubiel helped explain to me. Para tener un buen chocolate, tenemos que hacer un buen fermento y una buena selección de semillas. Si ustedes ven aquí en mi mano, todas las semillas están precisamente limpiecitas. Aquí este cacao tiene dos días de fermento. ¿Qué quiere decir que todavía le falta? Ya los, a los tres días tiene que estar de este color y la semilla ya infladita. ¿Qué quiere decir? Que tiene un buen fermento. Si no tenemos esa calidad, ¿qué quiere decir? Que el proceso del fermento ha sido mal. Entonces, hacemos un buen fermento. El aroma es importante que salga como alcohol, que ese alcohol se imprima al grano. Yeah. para que salga el aroma en el chocolate. Yeah. Entonces, ese es el, el, el proceso, el primer proceso, para que salga ya un buen chocolate. Because they grow the higher quality Carrillo variety of cacao bean here, the total fermentation time is actually shorter because of the naturally more mild flavor of the bean versus other varieties such as the Forestero. Once the fermentation stage is done, the pulp around the bean will be completely dissolved and is drained off. The remaining beans then need to be dried in the sun. Después de los cuatro días de fermento, agarramos le, precisamente el cacao que está ya listo, que está hidratado, y lo aventamos a la cancha a secarse. Lleva cuatro días de sol, así como está ahorita bien iluminado, son cuatro días. Mm -hmm. Si hay nubes y está muy op uh, opaco, Tiene que llevar cinco o seis días, porque tiene que estar bien seco el cacao, porque si no, se nos echa a perder, para que también ustedes vean. Entonces, ahí sale un buen chocolate, el aroma lo van a sentir, o sea, es muy importante sentir el aroma en estos momentos. Es un alcohol, uh -huh. que quiere decir que todas las mieles están penetrados en los granitos adentro, Por eso el chocolate sale aromático. Rufiel had me run the rake back and forth through the beans, turning the beans so that they would dry evenly. This needs to be done regularly, every hour and a half to two hours, or at least four days while the sun is out. My feet are too big, they don't fit between the paths. Aquí vamos a hacer la prueba de corte para ver precisamente la almendra, cómo está este fermentadita salga precisamente bien fermentada y bien seca precisamente ya lista para envasarlo para mandarlo precisamente al consumidor There's still one more step we need to do to capture that chocolate flavor roast them Roasting the beans helps make the outer shell easier to remove helps sterilize the beans, and improves their flavor. So after 30 minutes of roasting, the beans are now done. You can tell they're done because the outer shell will just fall off, and that means it's good to go. We then spent the next 15 minutes peeling the shells from the beans in order to make a few candy bars. All right, so now I have some roasted beans. I'll take these back home to make my candy bar. But Rubio here is going to show me the traditional method they use for making their candy bar. Yo te lo doy para que tú lo eches al molino y ya le des vuelta. Okay. 
para que salga ya, el, ya con el grano que tiene aquí el compañero y ya eso se muele la primera pasada y luego viene la segunda y ya es la refinada para que salga fino el chocolate. The mixture contains three ingredients, sugar from local sugar cane, cinnamon, picking of the cacao trees, and a freshly roasted and peeled cacao. At first, using the hand mill was a bit tricky, so Rubio had me do small amounts at a time. It was fascinating seeing this dry mixture turn into a dense chocolate paste. After three passes, we molded it into bars. Se le golpea para que quede masivo. After harvesting, fermenting, and roasting the cacao, I finally had some chocolate at hand. Thanks to Rubio and Juan Bonita, I now have my first look at the process of making chocolate. All right, so I've made a Mexican style candy bar. It'll dry overnight, turn into one of these, and uh, let's try a little bit of the scraps. Mm, that was really good. Very rich, got a bit of an extra texture to it. Definitely taste the cinnamon. I like that. I'll have to see if the candy bar I make compares to this. Check out the next part of this series where I make the sugar for my chocolate bar straight from the sugarcane plant.